All right, Bible study for today is get involved in kingdom work. Uh, how many knows it's not enough? Uh, somewhere in our walk with God, we have to get involved. It, it's not just about us. It's not just what we can get out of it. It's what we can also heal. And when I got in church, I, I have literally, and I'm not saying anybody has to do this, I'm talking about God has a work for everybody that gets in the church. He calls everybody to be a soldier, to do something in the church. Uh, when I got called to church years ago, uh, I had an old buddy of mine. We picked the worst day I mean, he'd be sleeting and snowing and all this, and I'd call him up and I said, hey, let's go, let's go door knock. Let's go invite folks to church. He said, man, it's sleeting and snowing outside. I said, yeah, I know, they'll let us in. Mm -hmm. Might even give us some hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. And so we take that day, and we were young, remember, I wasn't going to do it now, but we go out in the worst weather. We go knock doors and invite people to church and all that. But the Bible said, uh, it says our first goal as Christians is to love God with everything we have. Deuteronomy 6 and 5 says this. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Uh, I've said this, and I've said it many times. I've had people tell me this. They said it's hard living for God. How many believe that? It's hard living for God. I believe it's harder living for the devil. I believe it's harder living for the devil than it is for God. If you don't believe it is, look at some of the things that's happened to you in your past when you weren't living for God. And ask yourself, is it easier living for God or is it harder, uh, is it easier living for the devil? Ask that person that's hooked on drugs. Ask that person that's going through a divorce. Ask that person and, and leaving God out of it. Ask yourself, is it harder? Which one is it harder to serve? It's easier to live for God than it is to live for the devil. So when we get in the church, what we need to do, just is just the same way we were involved in ourself and doing the things we used to do, serving that other guy, and you will serve one of the other. Hey, anybody's ever heard of Bob Dylan? Bob Dylan was a singer from out years ago. I don't really know what all he wrote, but he did write one song that was true. He said, you're going to serve somebody. He said, it may be the Lord or it may be the devil, but you're going to serve somebody. And that's the same way in, in, when you're in the church. you got to serve somebody. And so uh, the word serve not necessarily means slave. Slave is somebody has been made to do something. Serving God is you do it willingly. Remember, there's a big difference between being a slave of God and a servant of God. And so, uh, he said, you uh, you got to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. That means God's number what? He's number one. He's number one. I'm not number one. That's what my problem was in the past. That I was number one. And you said, well, the devil's not. No, I was. Because... I was doing whatever my flesh felt good doing. And so, and it got me, it, and it got me in trouble. And so, uh, let me get this paper out of the way. I couldn't keep reading the wrong paper, but I watched <laughs> And, and uh, so I need to love God with all my what? My heart. Now, what is, is that talking about your pumper? Yeah. It, it's talking about your, the Bible said the heart or the passions of the body. Is the seat of affections. So it's not talking about so much about the heart uh, that's pumping, but it's talking about the heart, having a heart for God. And the Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart. In other words, what's he saying? David was a man that was after God's affection. He wanted to please God. He wanted to do what God wanted him to do. And so now we're getting involved in the work of God because we love him most of all. And that is what we created for. When we love God the way that we should, we want to obey His commandments. We want to get involved in kingdom work, uh, and, and, which includes others. Jesus declared in Matthew 22 
and 37 and 40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. There was a young man that came to him and, uh, you know, and uh, talked about he wanted to serve God. And he said, well, you got to serve him with all your heart. And, and, uh, he, and he said, this is the first and greatest commandment, that you serve God with all your soul, mind, and strength. Uh, he said, and the second is like unto it. Now, here's the two great commandments. That you love God, and He's got to be first. The second commandment is like unto it, it says. You've got to love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Woo! Now that second one, I, you know, I feel like I don't have a problem loving God sometimes, but I do have a problem loving my neighbor. Your neighbor can be anybody. <laughs> It is. It's just not. It's not just talking about the person you look on the side or over here. Right. It's, it's just talking about anybody that you deal with. Hey, I'll give you an example. I went out uh, this week and I, and I was doing a, an estimate on a job. Now, when when I pull into this place, it's a big old house. I mean, big fancy house. I mean, a, we we do a lot of work for some rich people, and so. I pull into this house. This lady gets out and she said, well, she said, uh, you beat me here. My housekeeper's already here too. So she has a big housekeeper and all this. So I go in and, and uh, she wants me to look at her cabinets. So I look at her cabinets and told her I'd give her a price and everything. And told her, you know, what we offer and that we respect her home, that I'm a minister and all that. She said, really? And so she sat down and began to talk to me. Now this is a these are not just your run of the mill people. She starts talking to me about, she said, man, I've been going through something for about eight months. And she said, I may have to take my little, uh, I think it's uh, her husband's uh, sister's little boy. He's eight year old. He, he, she's on drugs and all that. She may have to help raise him. And she said, that's got me scared to death. And she told me, she said, I'm a business lady. I own half of the business in town called Cypress Title. I don't know if y'all ever heard of that. And she said, uh, but, uh, you know, for eight months, I've been sitting on that back porch, and I've been trying to get myself right and things like that and going through things. And, man, and I sat there and talked to her for the long I forgot all about the estimate. Now, <laughs> now what's, what is the deal here? The deal is what God's got going is more important than what I got going. Right? Right? And, she, man, you could tell. She was taken in, and I, I began to tell her, I said, listen, we've all been through things. We've all dealt with things. We all deal with fear sometimes. We shouldn't, but perfect love casts them out on fear, the Bible said. Perfect love of God. I said, we've all dealt with things in our life. We've had things happen to us we didn't understand. We've had things to just knock us off our feet. And... Uh, I said, I can tell by talking to you, you've really been through something. And she said, I have. And, she, and man, she said, it's so awesome that you, she said, you're here for a reason. Not just to look at my cabinets. But she said, I really felt like, I said, yeah, this is meant to be. And I testified to her. I quoted scripture to her. And, uh, well, the rest of the story I'll tell you later, but because I, I can't tell it all, but some of the things she told me that she wanted to do for me. <laughs> I'm talking about to bless us, me and my wife. And, and uh, I, thought, I thought, man, this is, this is really something. And it was something we was already praying about. And, and fasting about and things like that. So, you know, we've got to be ready to do what? Kingdom work. What is kingdom work? It's the work of God, ain't it? It's the work that God's called. You, you can go to church, which is going to a building and assembly, and that's all you do. And you say, well, I'm good for the rest of the week. And, then, and I can go do Bible studies. But I haven't loved my neighbor until I get involved with my neighbor. Or uh, somebody that's in need or somebody's in help. And all that. You can go minister to other people. Yeah, we got to minister. God, call, God calls us to the church to reproduce ourselves. Tell you, as sure as we need God, somebody else needs God. It may be a family member. It may be a person you run into on the job. It may be a lady at the checkout counter at Dollar General or whoever it is. We got to always be ready. And uh, and so uh, Jesus said, 
These are the two great commandments. Love me first, then love you neighbor. Uh, the great commandment, the greatest commandment, middle of the page, is to love others as ourselves. Certainly none of us want to die and go to hell. Our love for others will cause us to tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul told the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 3 and 6 and 9, I have planted, Paulus water, but God gave the increase. Now what's he saying? It don't matter who gets the, uh, you know, uh, the accolades and somebody gets, we're not in it for that reason. Paul said, he said, I planted, I went and preached the word of God. And Apollos, which is another preacher, he kind of watered the plant. He, they're using farming techniques here. He said, I went out and they broke the ground up. I planted the seed. He said, then this fella come along and he poured water on it. You know, what we're doing here, we're talking about growth, right? We're talking about growth. Uh, you might, when you come into the church, you didn't come in under my preaching. <laughs> you come in under somebody else's preaching. There was another man who was here. Somebody else. But now he's gone. Right? I mean, he can't help you right now. I mean, what he's done done his part. Now what am I doing? I'm pouring some water on it. I'm helping you grow. But like you did with that lady, you you can plant the seed. I was planting the seed. Somebody else may come along and give the rest of it. I don't know. There you go. But you know, that's just the way it works. We've got to be ready to do the work of God. And so God gives the increase. He said. And now look at verse 7. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that water. But God gives the increase. God makes the plant grow. Now he that planteth and he that water for one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Now, you didn't do what he did, but you're working together as one, but you all get a separate what? Reward. Your reward is separate. For we are laborers, what? Together with God. We're working with God. Now, God wants us to work with Him. You say, well, God's working for me. No, we're working, we're working with God. We're, we're here for a reason. And let me tell you something about getting involved in, in church and doing things and finding you something to do and finding you a niche. Uh, I mean, if you want to do something, say, hey, Pastor, find me something to do. Is there something I can do? Uh, you know, I don't want to just come to church. Is, is there a job I can do? If it's nothing of a... Uh, he, he, now, he may tell you something small or something, or, or start you out, and he may say, well, yeah, you can, uh, you know, uh, check, ch check, make sure everybody picks their, you know, picks their uh, stuff up off the seat and, and, and give you a place to put it or something if they don't, or uh, check and see if anybody's left trash laying around. And, you know, I, I've done it all. When I pastor the church, I clean the molds. I, I done it all because I started the church. I had, we didn't have a bunch of people, so I mowed the grass. I just done anything, and, and, and I know it's kind of tough. You guys don't live here close by, but I, I'm just using for instance for anybody. Uh, there's always something we can do for the church. Uh, Bible said we're laborers together with God, yet God's husbandry. You are God's what? Building. Building. You are God's building. Now, the husband tree means, it means you're God's field of work. You're God's field of work. You take a, a vineyard dresser that goes out and, might, and takes care of a vineyard. That's his husband tree. That's what he's taking care of. And so you're God's work, but also you're God's building. And, you, and so... Some of these terms that they use is symbolic like. I mean, like many times Christ will talk about the farmer and how you've got to be patient. And he said the farmer goes out and plants a crop. Well, he don't look come out there the next day and say, Well, I can't figure this out. I planted that crop yesterday, why it up? Takes time, don't it? Somebody gotta give it attention, somebody gotta work it. Now, I look at you. Like the farmer looks at the field. I don't expect you to be in the wintertime where you're going to be in the springtime. I don't look at you where you're going to be in the springtime where you're going to be in the fall. Now what's going to happen uh, in later in the fall? We're going to have a harvest. We're going to harvest some of the things that we planted now. Uh, it's just, that's the way it works. 
And you have to look at yourself like that too. You say, hey, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. We're still being fertilized. <laughs> hey, there you go. That's right. We are. Hey, guess what? We all are. God's still working on all of us. I used to sing this little song, please. Uh, He's still working on me. You remember that? I know the whole song just about Make it. me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars. The stars are sun and the earth. moon and, and Jupiter, Jupiter and Mars. Yeah, there you go. He's still working on me. He's still working on me. And uh, can you hear people? Some of that song. Yet, so. uh, then we drop on down here and it says, when we tell others about Jesus, we are what? Mm. Plant and seed. Uh, when we pray and fast and teach those that have uh, had seed planted, we are watering the seed. That is our part in the process of someone being saved. No man is greater than another, for it takes all of us working together to build the body of Christ. That's why I said, don't ever feel like because I hadn't been coming to this church as long as others, that this is not your church. You're just as important as somebody been coming here 20 years. Believe it or not, I'm an outsider. I've only been here for nine years. There's, there's been people here for years. Some of y'all probably been to this church four hours ago. I didn't know it was here. You didn't know it was here? I didn't know it was here. Sure. <laughs> you, you was here a long time ago. But yeah. well, what I'm saying is, Everybody in this room, we could consider ourselves as outsiders. If you wanted to, it came in Johnny come latest. But you know what? I worked just as hard for this church as I did my church I used to go to. But why? It's kingdom work, not ATL work. It's the kingdom. If I went somewhere else, I would work hard there. Why? It's kingdom work. I'm concerned about what God wants. That's why I'm born into it. Into the kingdom of God to do the work of God. It's all about kingdom. And uh, said First uh, John fifteen and one through seven. I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit is taken away. Every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Now just looking from the soap method. Looking for the soap method. If I'm looking into scripture and analyzing it, if I'm talking about bringing forth fruit, what am I talking about? Just kidding. Yeah. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And he said, if you, if you're expected to bring forth fruit, because you're, you're a fruit bearer, mm -hmm. same God. So you bring forth fruit. And if you're bringing forth fruit, you're, what is a, what's happening when a tree is bringing forth fruit? It's reproducing itself, right? It's reproducing itself. And he said, uh, every branch that bear fruit, he purchases it. He said it brought to bring forth more fruit. So if you bring forth fruit for God, then he's going to... What, what is purging? What's purging? What do you do to a tree when you purge it? Huh? Clean it. And not, not, it, not on it. You trim it. You cut on it. You, don't you take a tree and then if you want to prune it or... Uh, Help it grow. Of course, it's the word purging here. They use the word purging here. It helps it grow. Uh, this morning, I, my wife had a uh, a fern that had got partially a good heavy frost during that real cold spring before we could get it covered up good. So one side of the fern was covered in brown looking burnt leaves. The other side was fine. So if I want that fern to get back to its normal way it should be, what I got to do to it? Prune it. Prune it. I gotta get rid of them old brown leaves. But why? Them brown leaves are what? Doing what? Nothing. But what are they doing to the to the bush? It's, it's pulling. It's, it's pulling, believe it or not. 
you got to get that off of there or that plant will never become what it needs to be. So that's that stuff that's not producing anything but, <laughs> but taking. Not producing, but taking. We got we, we can't be in the church and be also, always taking. We've got to be giving also. If we want to grow. Because the Bible said that which is bearing fruit, he purges it and he brings forth what? More fruit. So looking from that soap method here, we're analyzing, we're seeing the application, we're asking ourselves, how does this apply to my life? I'm not just going to read this. I don't want to just read this. So, well, they say read the Bible through this year. I told my wife, I said, you know, that's good. I said, but if I don't watch myself, I can't, well, I got to get called up. So I got to read 15 scriptures today, you know, and get called up. Well, that's great, but I want to also take time to see what I'm reading and see how it applies. Uh, he said, neither, he said, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. We know uh, the, we're the branch, except it abide in the vine, which is Christ. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, I will be in him the same that bringeth forth much fruit. You, saw, you see how he takes normal, everyday things, like a bush, and he's applying it to our lives. He said, uh, bring forth fruit, but without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch that withereth, and men gather them. What does he do with them? He casts them in the fire, they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall come be, uh, be done unto you. There's going to be growth that will take place if the, the, the branch will abide. What? Now, what's a branch do from the vine or from the either the, the limbs on the tree even? What, what does it do? It pulls from the roots. Christ portrays himself as the root. Uh, and, and we draw from him. But... Uh, he wants us to bring forth fruit. Now, he came one time. He comes, Chief Christ. And I wish I thought to look his up. He comes and he says, I've been here three years. And he tells the uh, the caretaker, it's in the scripture. He said, I've been here three years and it has not brought forth fruit. Three years I've come by here and there's been no fruit on this tree. He said, Cut it down. And uh, he said, But well, Lord, and this is the caretaker. Now, this is the preacher stepping in your life. This is Moses stepping in for the people when God wants to destroy them. God said, there's enough. It's intercession. It's Christ being a mediator. It's, uh, give me one more year. No, I think it's, you know, no, he's been there two years. He said, give me one more year. That's what he was. Give me one more year. And then if it don't break for fruit, then cut it down. So what does it take? God's patient. He waits. But then... After a while, God says, it's time to bring forth fruit. Because if we're not bringing forth fruit, we're probably not being obedient. We're probably not putting ourselves in the position that God can use us. Because God wants to use every one of us. He gave us all something to do. All gave us the work to do. If it ain't doing nothing, but uh, I got these certain people that need help, and I'm going to pray. I'm going to spend time in prayer for them. It ain't always knocking on the door. And, and I'm going to tell you something. You said, well, I don't know anybody that can help. Pray that God has put somebody in your life. Now, you guys have helped each other. Right? That's kingdom work. Believe it or not, that's kingdom work. When you step out in life and you find somebody to work with, somebody you know needs help, and you help one another, God looks at that. And that's important to God. It means something to Him. That's what He would do. That's exactly what he would do. The lady said the other day, she said, I know I'm going to be asked to take this child, but I've got some six-year-olds. A little six-year-old. And she said, I worry about the home he's coming out of. And, and I said, well, and she said, I'm scared. And I said, well, I'm going to help you pray. I said, uh, she, I said, so have you been asked? She said, no. I said, you know what? Sometimes God wants to see if we're Will it? I said, that may work out some other way. And she said, but also, I want to help. I feel like I'm supposed to help her mother, who is older than this lady. And I said, 
Now listen. It's okay to help her mother. Remember, there's a difference between an adult and a child. I said, she's old enough to take care of herself. I said, that does not mean you move her mother in with you. <laughs> you know, it's a different situation here. If she's not willing to go through rehab or get some help or something like that, you could, I said, you do have to think. I said, where does the Bible say charity begins? She said, at home. She said, you have helped me so much. <laughs> and she is Catholic. She's Catholic. And, and she was talking about calling her priest and talking to him. And I thought, you know, this lady is sincere and she's doing everything she knows to do at the time. I really believe that. But see, I knew God put me there. But it's a process. It's a process. That's right. It's a process. It's a process. Is she honest? Yes, yeah, she's because honest. Because I can relate to someone uh, taking in a child. Yeah. That, well, as a grandchild. Not mm -hmm. my child, but a grandchild. Yeah. It's a big responsibility. You know. Yeah. You've seen what we went through. Sure. That's it is right. a big responsibility. It is a big responsibility. And, and uh, I guarantee you, uh, it's much appreciated. <laughs> much appreciated. Okay, I, I'm going to read this one more scripture and we'll start on church attendance next week. Uh, Jesus told his disciples that reproducing yourself is a requirement for continuing with him. Bearing fruit is also a natural consequence of remaining in Jesus. We were given the Holy Ghost so that we would be witnesses according to Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. And that's where we come in at, and in the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, down in the boondocks of Louisiana. <laughs> All right, any questions today about anything we've talked about? Does everybody understand the relationship between fruit, uh, being the branches and the vine, and how he's using natural stuff here to show us uh, spiritual things? That's what he does. All right. Stop this one, fellow, then.